In my last video, I made this really cool tool that drills odd-shaped recesses for brass inlays. I made the inlays by hand, but in this video, I'll make a punch and die to easily and repeatably punch my logo out of brass sheet. I've got a piece of D2 high carbon steel for the punch and die, so let's get started and I'll make the punch first as I think that will be the trickiest. The logo on the template is 14 millimeters or thereabout across and the stock for the die is just over 15. I need to mill three of the sides. That will get me the two sides of the logo and the top and then I can work on the pointy bits afterwards. The D2 steel is a wear resistant steel that's used for making dies and although I'm not 100% sure I think the D does stand for die. At the moment it's in a soft state allowing me to machine it and when I finish shaping it then I'll harden it. Also another reason why this steel is used for making dies is that it has very little distortion when it's heat treated. That's all squared up to the right dimensions. Next I need to file the pointy bits. There's too much material on here, so I need to uh, trim that down. Also, I need to file all the way through the block and there's far too much of it there. I don't need it anywhere near as long as that, so I need to cut it off this way as well. I could have cut it off shorter before I milled it, but by doing it this way, I still have another piece of milled stock for whatever reason if I need to remake it. I wasn't very brave there with my cut, I was quite a way off the line and left more material than what I needed to. I milled the last face so it's milled all the way around. Next I'll use the template for the parser drill to mark out the punch as this is what I'm trying to match. Next I'll file the pointy bits which are the teeth of the logo and to help keep that accurate and consistent I'll use a file guide. This will hold the pieces and using the carbide faces I can control where to file to. First I'll file the majority of the waste away so I'll set the guide to the points of the three teeth. The carbide will destroy my file so I'm using a good file to get so far down and then I use an old file to finish it. You can see how well that works. Now I'll start on the teeth themselves doing one face at a time. This will be a job for needle files. I'm not even going to think about using my good ones for this so I'll manage with the cheap old ones. I did order a 60 degree dovetail cutter to cut between the teeth on the milling machine but I got tired of waiting for it to arrive and that's why I'm filing them instead. I was inspired by my small clamps that I recently made and got great feedback from to make a design of it for a t-shirt and I'm excited to present my limited run first edition hold strong shirt. It's 100% cotton, makes for a comfortable fit and the double stitching on the neckline and sleeves make it durable for any workshop projects. As this is a limited run, my Hold Strong shirt will only be offered in the link below for the next little bit. As always, thanks for the support and simply click the link in the description below to check it out. On a triangular file, the corners aren't that sharp. There's a bit of a radius to them. You can probably see that better on this larger file here. So what I've done is I've ground the one face down and that's left a nice sharp edge and that will let me get right into the pointy bits of the punch. Also I can use the ground side of the file against the face that I just filed with no risk of cutting into it. I'm going slowly and gradually here keeping away from the scribe lines and making fine adjustments working up to the final shape. 
I'm nearly there with filing between the teeth and look what just turned up. And this is how I was going to do it. I was going to mill those out with the dovetail cutter, but the files are working pretty well, so I'll finish it that way. I'll do the two outside faces of the outer teeth back on the milling machine. That's looking pretty good. Now I'll put the punch aside and make the die and I'll make that out of the same D2 steel. I'll drill a through hole and from there I can file out the logo and as much as I like filing I don't fancy going all the way through that block so I'll remove some material from the back by drilling out a recess. This 18mm bit is the largest drill I have and it's not quite large enough so I'll finish the recess with a 20mm end mill. I wasn't going to use the file guide because it didn't open up enough but I swapped out the screws which were too short for some longer ones and the pins don't quite reach and they're there to align the uh, two sides of the guide but it looks like it's all tightened up pretty well all the way around so I think that should be accurate enough. I should say that the two sides of the guide could still be slightly skew with but it'll be far more accurate than filing them without the guide. I won't show too much of this as it will quickly become tedious to watch. I stayed well within the scribe lines to start with and gradually nudged my way in until the punch fitted the opening. At this point I could have forced that in there so it's getting close. Next I made very fine adjustments using the end of the needle file to feel where the material was sticking out and gently tapping it to make the slightest adjustments. It took a fair bit of work but it's looking promising. Next I'll make holders for the two parts to fit onto my fly press. I'll make the holder for the punch from this scrap of round bar and first I'll turn down a tenon on one end on the lathe. Next I'll drill a hole almost all the way through the bar, just wider than the bolt and that will be used to fix the punch onto the end of the holder. That's looking great, now I'll drill and tap a hole in the back of the punch. I don't have a bottoming tap but I do have this cheap old one that's already ground down from doing the same thing in the past and it will let me cut a few more threads into the bottom of the hole. 
I did still have to grind about a millimetre off the end of the bolt to get it to fit, but there's still plenty of thread there to hold the punch. I'm really happy with that. Now I'll make a holder for the die, but first I decided to mill the outside faces of the block just to make sure that the corners are all square. This piece of mild steel flat bar will get clamped to the fly press and be the base of the holder. I'll cut this piece of steel that I just milled off camera into pieces and that will surround and hold the die in place. Two of the pieces are drilled and tapped so screws can tighten against the die and secure it. I'll weld the pieces down to the flat bar using a spacer to give the die some clearance. The die is lifting slightly when I tighten it, but I'll fix that later on. The punch and die need to be hardened, but I couldn't resist trying it out on a piece of wood veneer. I was going to harden them with my forge, but my setup isn't ideal for heat treating D2 steel and I would have just been winging it. So I visited my mate Luke, who you would have seen in past videos. He only lives down the road and he has the equipment and the knowledge to heat treat them properly. After wrapping them, we put them into the heat treat oven and set it to get to 1000 degrees C and then hold it there for 30 minutes. When it was ready, we quenched them with aluminium quench plates to draw the heat out of them quickly. And while I did the punch, Luke was just off camera and he did the dye with a second set of quench plates. Next we put them in the freezer for 30 minutes and then I took them straight home to temper them. I did that in the toaster oven at 175 degrees C for two hours and then let it cool before doing another tempering cycle. And thanks again Luke for your help. The next day I ground an angle on two of the faces and that's for the bolts that hold the die to force it down onto the base plate. It's still lifting slightly, it needs adjusting, but it definitely works better. I sprayed Boshield T9 onto the parts to stop them rusting and I find this stuff really works amazingly well. I've got a piece of one millimetre thick brass and a piece of half millimetre copper and I'll try the copper first. I need to add a stripper so the sheet doesn't get stuck. I was always going to add one but I wanted to show it without first and why one is needed. I also need to set the stop on the fly press to allow the punch to go a touch lower and punch the piece through and I also need a better system than removing the die to get to the piece. Drilling a one inch escapement hole in the base of the holder and another one through the top of the fly press stand will sort out the access to the punched out pieces. And for the stripper I'm using a rubber bushing which will make more sense when it's fitted.
That worked fantastic. Next, I'll try it with the one millimeter brass. This really is fun, but I'll quickly run out of brass at this rate, so I think I'll stop there. I then tried a piece of 1.5 millimeter aluminium that I cut off a piece of angle, and that worked great too. I reckon it'd punch material much thicker, but I don't want to push it, and there's no real need as one millimeter brass is what I made it for. So here's the parser drill in action and the reason I made the punch and die. And in future, it'll only take a minute or so to add my brass logo to my work. I think I'd be subtle how I used it, like putting it on the underneath of a seat of a stool or chair or on the back of furniture, but I reckon it's a cool way of marking my work. The brass insert has rounded edges on the back and a very slight burr on the front, but it only takes about 20 seconds or so to sand it off. I'm cleaning it with acetone before I glue it and for that I'm just using CA glue. I realise here that I probably didn't need to sand that burr off first as it would get removed here anyway. It was a fun project, I really enjoyed it, hopefully you enjoyed it too. If you did please like and subscribe, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.